as I said, today's show, we will introduce you to a whole group of your new best friends in your head. As I like to say, our next guest started out as friends themselves when they were getting PhDs at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, where they were studying the science of food. What, where was, was this offered at Temple University? This <laughs> led them both to have what I think would be a dream job for anyone. And joining us are two dope people, Dr. Maya Warren, who is an ice cream scientist, and Dr. Amy DeJong, who is a candy scientist. Can I tell you, you are my best friends already in my head? <laughs> Dr. Maya, I'll start with you. You're an ice cream scientist. Okay. When you yes. freshmen enroll and they have a list, did you go in knowing you wanted to be an ice cream scientist or did you see that as an option of majors and thought, that's a win-win? How did this happen? You know, uh, neither one actually. So I'm a chemist by trade. So I have my bachelor's of art in chemistry. And then I actually found food, food science by watching a show um, on a television network. And I was so inspired. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could use my chemistry skills and put it towards food. And I can literally become a food scientist. And I told myself when I was about 21, I'm going to do what I love and love what I do for the rest of my <sighs> life. And I absolutely love ice cream, Tamron. It is literally my life. I can't do, I can't live without it. <laughs> you, we are, so, the doc, Dr. Yes. I, you just said two things, which proves how brilliant you are. A, you were smart enough not to name that other show, which whatever it is, it's not the Tamron Hunt show. <laughs> two, the thing yes. that's so awesome, and this is why we wanted to do this show. You saw someone on another program that inspired you, that said and spoke to the spirit of what you're doing. And that's exactly the intention of the show. That's why we have an all-female audience. That's why we're doing this. Now, uh, Dr. Amy, the reason why we're doing it for you is that um, so I can get some candy. Anyone who's ever been to, <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's ever been to my home, I keep jars and jars of gummies all the time in my office. It's my life. Um, when did you realize or start to really appreciate the science of candy and consumption in food? So I think I've always just been really interested in science and wasn't exactly sure how, like, I wanted my career to advance from there. And kind of like Maya, I found food science by accident. You know, it was something that I had just seen in a list of college majors. I um, started my bachelor's degree in food science at the University of Wisconsin. And Wisconsin actually has a specific, like, candy science emphasis. I love it. Okay, so, you know, of course we have you here, and we all love ice cream and sweets, sweets around here. Dr. Maya, you're going to walk us through a no-churn vanilla ice cream. I ask where this has been my whole life. Do you know how many ice cream machines I have at my home, how much money I've wasted, and I need to sell them on eBay? Because you're going to show us a no-churn. <laughs> the science behind the no-churn is what? So the science behind the no-churn is literally sort of just dissecting the ice cream and putting it back together. So okay. the no-churn is amazing because you're able to have whipped cream, which I know you have whipped cream already. Uh -huh. So the whipped cream is the foam part of, it's the air cells, the foam part of the ice cream. And so you actually don't have to put it all in a freezer and, and let it churn right. because you're putting all of those ingredients together and letting it freeze um, in your freezer. And then it comes out absolutely amazing. Okay, well, I've got delicious. the ingredients in front of me. I've got sweetened condensed milk here. I've got evaporated milk, which I could eat both and drink both of these without putting anything. <laughs> Two <laughs> tablespoons of vanilla, a pinch of salt. So Dr. Maya, I'm moving over. I've got all my ingredients in. I've got my heavy cream. I've got my whisk. And the science, I've always been mystified. First of all, I don't buy whipped cream anymore. Once I learned that if I wanted to do my cardio in, I could whip it up myself. How yes, are we able, yes. so I'm whipping here. Tell me what's happening to this, the chemical reaction, I guess it is, between these ingredients here. Yes, so your whipped cream, your whip, your whipping cream has to be usually about 30 or so percent fat. So you have to have enough fat in there in order for air to start getting trapped in. So what you're doing, you're actually doing a volume expansion. And in ice cream, we call that the, the volume expansion in ice cream, we call that overrun. So we're actually creating the overrun when we're taking our two cups of very cold, heavy whipping cream and we're literally whipping it. And you can do it with a whisk, you can do it with a hand mixer or a stand mixer, and you're literally creating a foam structure. Why does it have to be very cold? Yes, very good question, Tamara. You really want it to be cold because the fat 
just like butter, the, the same fat that's in our whipped cream is the same fat that's in butter. It's milk fat and it can start to melt. And when it melts, it can't hold up the structure nearly as well. So you want it to be cold. You want it to make sure that you're able to get that structure. And that's a beautiful whipped cream that you have right there. And there's this phenomenon ice cream called partial coalescence. Partial coalescence is the agglomeration of fat globules and it happens at cold temperatures, typically at frozen temperatures. So you definitely want to make sure that your whipped cream is as cold as possible to create the beautiful stiff peaks that I that I know you okay, have in your Okay, I'm going to have you pause right there while I Google everything you just said. <laughs> We're going to be back with these amazing scientists who are on the forefront of changing the conversation. This is what ladies can do. We'll be right back. We are back with two of the coolest food scientists that I've ever met. Personally, I've never met any, but they're my favorites. <laughs> Dr. Maya Warren and Dr. Amy Jayong, who are showing us how to create ice cream sundaes. And yes, there is a science behind it. I just, I have fallen in love with the two of you. You need a talk show on the Science Channel or something. But meanwhile, let's get to it. So here we have it. I have um, my whipped topping that I was whipping in the commercial break. Now we're going to layer. Yes, you're going to make sure you combine it with the um, sweetened condensed milk mm -hmm. mixture, and then you're going to layer it in. So I see your beautiful vanilla ice cream base. We're going to make super thin layers. And Tamron, the beauty of making this no-churn ice cream is that it's a blank canvas. You can make it into anything and everything. So whatever your favorite inclusions are, you can put a thin layer of your ice cream base and then put some inclusions just like yeah. I'm doing here. And then follow that by another thin layer of your ice cream base and right. keep doing that until the top layer is your inclusions and you are left with beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ice cream, just like you have there. So once we're done layering this like a lasagna, we put it in the um, refrigerator, right? Or the freezer, rather. You put it in the freezer. Yes, you put it in the freezer for about five hours, depending upon the size of your container. Mm -hmm. And then you take it out. You maybe have to let it sit on the counter just for a little bit, just so that you can make sure it's a little bit easier to scoop because we're not getting a ton of air in this. Mm -hmm. And then you can absolutely enjoy. Let your taste buds dance. Let them be in complete bliss. Well, I have the finished product here after we took it out of the freezer. This is phenomenal. I'm going to yes. eat it in a second. But Dr. Amy, I want to pivot to you because you have this toffee deliciousness that you're going to walk me through just in case the ice cream's not enough. Yes, exactly. So today we are making some toffee and a lot of candy making really is just about controlling the, the temperature. So with toffee, we want to get to that high enough temperature where we can develop a lot of those really nice caramel flavors, that really nice caramel color, mm -hmm. but then also texture. So I've got my little candy thermometer here and we're trying to cook it to a high enough te temperature so we can get that like really brittle, crisp texture. Got it. But really candy making is all about just temperature, moisture, and then we can carry all kinds of amazing different Now textures. I know people who try to wing making like caramel sauce or without a candy thermometer. You are the science, you get the last word on this. Is it possible to do it without a candy thermometer? It is, but it's, far better to do it with Done. because then you can control consistency. So people will, they'll wonder why it doesn't quite turn out right. So that candy thermometer can really help you make sure you're getting what you want. Well, I have my finished caramel um, in front of me. So after we get to temperature, so mine's not quite done, but after we get to temperature, we pour it on top of some nice pecans mm -hmm. and then you can layer the chocolate chips. Once they melt, spread them, spread the chocolate chips. Um, okay. out over the top of the hot toffee. Um, and then once it melts, you'll have a delicious combination of that crunchy toffee and the sweet chocolate that's perfect for ice cream topping. You want me to crack it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> did it break okay. apart? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it broke apart, not like I wanted Yay. it to, but <laughs> it did. Because guess what? As my dad says, it all goes down the same way. I'm going to eat it anyway. So we crack a little of this on top. By the way, the full recipe, which I will be making with my nieces, on TamaronHawkShow.com. Let me try this finished product. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, sorry. Cheers to you, ladies. Cheers, cheers, cheers. <laughs> yes, cheers. Oh, fantastic. I got my toffee. I got my ice cream. 
What will I do? Netflix and chill, I guess. Go to TamaronHallShow.com for Dr. Amy's gummy bear recipe, by the way. That's online as well. Dr. Maya, Dr. Amy, that is fantastic. We celebrate all that you are and all of the kids who will be inspired by the two of you.